One popular misconception of the Reformation is that the Reformation was anti-Thomas Aquinas. But actually, the story is far more complicated and perhaps quite surprising because the story of the 16th century, and especially the 17th century, well, it's quite different. In fact, when we look at the 16th century, what do we discover? Well, Luther in particular is quite an angst about the late medieval scholastics, individuals like William of Ockham and Gabriel Beale and their understanding of God and salvation. However, as the Reformation progresses, it becomes more and more clear, especially as the Reformed thinkers begin to codify their faith, confessions, catechisms, even entire systems of theology, that they are actually quite indebted to earlier scholastics, even Thomas Aquinas himself. What many may find surprising is that when you look at Martin Bootser, Peter Martyr Vermigli, uh, Zonke, let alone later Reform thinkers like John Owen or Francis Turretin, you actually see the influence of Thomas Aquinas on their doctrine and even on their method. We have to remember that the scholastic method, well, today scholastic sometimes is used as a bad word, but actually scholastic just refers to the method uh, of a question in which a certain concise and very precise answer is given, even an answer to certain objections. This method proved very instrumental, and it's used by the reformers themselves as they even oppose their opponents. Well, they not only utilized this scholastic method to clarify the reformed faith, but they even went further. In areas of clear orthodoxy, they were quite indebted to Thomas Aquinas, especially on, say, the doctrine of God or Christology, even in terms of natural theology and arguments for the existence of God, even ethics, especially with virtue, or even eschatology as they contemplated the future and the beatific vision itself. All that to say, when we take a hard and close look, the story is more complicated. Yes, they certainly disagreed with Thomas Aquinas on, say, infused as opposed to imputed righteousness, or transubstantiation at, say, the Lord's table, or the papacy. But outside of some of those specific doctrines, they found themselves in continuity with Thomas, especially in matters of orthodoxy. One of the reasons for this is because, well, Thomas and the reformers were Augustinian in their approach and even in their theology itself, which raises another important issue. Even on subjects like grace, we could ask, well, were the reformers against Thomas? Not necessarily. It depends. If we are referring to, say, predestination, well, you might find it surprising that Thomas Aquinas and John Calvin sound almost identical. They sound very similar to one another because they're both Augustinian. Even in terms of grace itself, well, Thomas Aquinas understood because of original sin, grace must be primary. So yes, Thomas and the reformers disagreed as to exactly how grace should work in, say, justification. But they were Augustinian enough to even have some agreement over grace on predestination or even the primacy of grace over against Pelagianism and semi-Pelagianism. All that to say, history is often more complicated than we assume. But for the reformers, and especially their Protestant scholastic heirs, they found themselves in continuity with the Augustinian tradition before them. And that was actually key because they could then say to Rome, we are actually Catholic too. Catholic with a small c, meaning we are in continuity with the universal church.